on guys my name is Zed and welcome to this video this is last week the show where I basically talk about whatever I found interesting in the last week in pop culture um, so that could be movies TV shows games whatever the hell I want to talk about I'll talk about it also on the agenda we have a last week I watched the show where I talk about all the movies I watched last week and then we're going to end off the show with the Mandalorian or the Mando discussion which is just the weekly show where I talk about that week's episode of the Mandalorian. So without any further ado uh, let's get into it with some kind of researched news. <laughs> So first up, we have some news coming from Zack Snyder himself. Uh, he has basically gone on to confirm that there will be an additional two hours and 30 minutes of additional footage in his Justice League cut. I mean, over the past couple of weeks, I have been um, talking about um, all the new things he's adding and, uh, you know, the addition of Jared Leto's Joker, uh, actually getting to introduce the Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern, um, Dark Side. I mean, there's a ton of new stuff being introduced into his Snyder Cut, and uh, so it's super exciting. And then in some Transformers news, director Stephen Cable Jr., uh, most well known for directing the Creed 2 sequel, uh, has been confirmed to direct the newest installment in the Transformers live action franchise. Now it is expected that this movie will pick up right where the 2018 Bumblebee movie left off. Now Bumblebee served as a sort of soft reboot of the franchise and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Bumblebee was fantastic. Fantastic. I loved seeing more traditional looking Transformers, especially in that opening sequence on Cybertron. I'm stoked for the sequel or reboot or whatever the hell it is. And then next up, we do have some DC television news. It wouldn't be an episode without it. Uh, the CW is developing a new television series based off of one of DC Comics' newest characters, Yara Floor who uh, has been recently introduced in the newest DC Comics event, Future State. Now, Yara Floor is a character called Wonder Girl, which to the best of my knowledge is a younger version of Wonder Woman. But this one is uh, a young Latino uh, girl, and that's what they're casting in the show. It's casting a young Latino woman uh, to portray Wonder Girl, which is also the working title for the show. I love the look of Future State. There are so many great titles coming out. It makes me wish I knew how to read um, because I would totally get into this uh, this whole new, I was going to call it Rebirth, but we already had a Rebirth, but I would totally get into Future State. Uh, but this is exciting. I love um, uh, Wonder Woman as a character, and I know we have a Wonder Girl in, um, what's it called, in Titans. Uh, I believe it's Wonder Girl, uh, but I love this idea. CW. I'm mixed on. I'm not a big fan of CW, but I don't know. It could be exciting. And then we have some new cast listings out of the Loki Disney Plus TV series. It looks like Richard E. Grant may be playing a more classic version of Loki in this series. Now, this furthers the rumors that we'll be seeing multiple versions of Loki throughout the series, not just Tom Hiddleston's Loki. There's been rumors of a female Loki. Obviously, we're going to be seeing a, 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 a younger Loki, a more, you know, just like Tom Hiddleston Loki. And then, like, a more traditional classic Loki. I'm assuming it's, like, this Loki made from the comic books, or maybe it's just a Loki... Uh, from like mythology. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but really exciting. And Richard E. Grant has the look. He has the chops. He is a fantastic actor. I've seen him in a slew of other things. So exciting news. Next up in some late night news, popular host Conan O'Brien has announced that he will end his late night show Conan in June of 2021. Now, this comes to a big surprise. Conan has been doing Late Night for 28 years, and um, it's a very surprising ending. I mean, Conan is a super popular show. Um, I personally love it. It's my favorite out of all the Late Night shows. Um, and what's even more crazy is that Conan has now signed a deal over at HBO Max to bring a variety show to the streaming service, uh, which is 
crazy to me. I, I don't know. Um, will Andy Richter be brought over? Um, what does this variety show mean? Uh, how is he going to conclude his, conclude his show over at TBS? I'm not sure, uh, but I am sad. I love Conan. Um, I love his his show. I watch all of his clips on YouTube. He's just he's he's great. He has such a great personality, and that's kind of hard to come by uh, with a lot of these late night show hosts. Is an actual good genuine personality. Now this piece of news might lose a couple of you guys, so if you have no interest, then just skip ahead, that's okay. Uh, but we have the first official looks at Adult, Shark Boy, and Lava Girl in the upcoming Netflix movie, We Can Be Heroes. Now, Taylor Dooley, who played the young uh, Lava Girl in the original movie, is reprising her role, but unfortunately, Taylor Lautner did not sign on, and he has been recasted, uh, so he will not be in the movie to play Shark Boy. Uh, but this movie is basically about Shark Boy and Lava Girl. They're adults now, they're parents, they have a kid, and uh, that's about all I know. Um, this came as shocking news in the beginning of the year when they announced that they were going to be doing a sequel. Uh, and I've been excited ever since. I grew up on Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Let me get my DVD. Hold on. Let me see if I can find my DVD copy of it. Boom, baby. Look at that. The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl in 3D. I loved the hell out of this movie. I cannot wait to see what's in store. Maybe we'll get an appearance from George uh, Bush. George Bush. <laughs> Maybe we'll get an appearance from George Lopez. Uh, but these official images are great. I love the costumes. They're just as goofy as they were all the way back then. Um, fucking so stoked. What I forgot to mention was this movie is set to release on January 1st. 2021. Now next up we have some bittersweet news. Actor Michael J. Fox announces that he will be retiring from acting due to his declining health. Now the actor was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease all the way back in 1991 and he has become one of the biggest ambassadors in the world for the Parkinson's foundations and charities and, and what have you. Um, uh, it's just becoming increasingly more difficult for him to work due to the disease and this is unfortunate but he has given us so many performances, so many memorable performances. Marty McFly, obviously. Now, he has gone into retirement in the past, and he does say that this is not goodbye. You know, if he is offered something or he feels up to it, he will do some acting. But as of right now, he is just, he's just not looking for work. Um, he's just going to sit at home, relax, and, you know, take it day by day. And then in some MCU news, actress Elizabeth Olsen, who plays Scarlet Witch, uh, has announced that she will be starting work on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness starting in December of this year. Uh, that's when she will you know, pick up her, her life, move over there for a couple months, and do her stuff. This is just furthering my excitement for the movie. I love the addition of Scarlet Witch. It only makes sense. Um, so, yeah, super exciting. And then next up in horror, uh, we have the title and the release date for the upcoming fifth installment in the Scream franchise. Now, this fifth installment will simply be titled Scream. Now, this doesn't come as a surprise as this uh, installment was supposed to serve as a sequel, but also reboot to the franchise, and I guess they're taking the whole Halloween um, influence. Um, and uh, this movie is set to release on January 14th, 2022. Uh, now this has a great cast. Uh, Neff Campbell is returning. Uh, Courtney Cox is returning. The guy that played Dewey is returning. Um, Jenna Ortega. I mean, there's just a bunch of different uh, people going to be in this movie. Super exciting. I honestly hope we get to see Matthew Lillard uh, at some point. I know he gave an interview uh, back in the day, a couple like, earlier this year, saying that they hadn't asked him to return, but he definitely would. And I hope they fucking took the hint and they asked Matthew Lillard to come back. In some DCEU movie news, uh, Wonder Woman 1984 has officially gotten a release date. Not only will it be opening in select theaters, but it will also be premiering on HBO Max on Christmas Day. That is December 25th. 
2020. Uh, this has kind of been um, rumored and there's been you know murmurs on the internet that maybe they're thinking about releasing on HBO Max and they officially have uh, have made the announcement and that's exciting to me. The sooner I can see this movie, the better. Uh, there's only been like two movies this year that I've been the most excited for and they're both DC movies and that is Wonder Woman 84 and The Batman. Now this absolutely has to be the most important piece of news I have ever talked about here on last week. And that comes from actor Paul Bettany, who plays the Vision in the MCU. Now Bettany has gone on record stating that the Vision has a purple penis that can change density. And in some sequel news, actor Mel Gibson confirms that Lethal Weapon 5 will be happening, we just don't know when, uh, which is kind of crazy. I am not familiar with the franchise, I don't have much else to comment on, um, but I guess we're getting a fifth installment. So we have recently covered the rumors that Mads Mikkelsen was in talks to take over the role of Grindelwald uh, after... Depp's departure from the Fantastic Beasts franchise, and from Mickelson himself, he has gone on to debunk these rumors. He says they're not true, there's been no talks. Um, I still do think that uh, Mickelson would be the next best choice. Uh, obviously, I want Depp to come back, but uh, these are interesting. Uh, I, I definitely uh, had high hopes, but uh, I guess everything is still up in the air. Actor Joe Manganiello has confirmed via his Instagram that he will be reprising his role as Deathstroke in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now, further rumors have been circulating that this version of Deathstroke will actually be the Nightmare Deathstroke. Uh, so there's, there's going to be a longer sequence, uh, nightmare sequence in this movie. Um, and that's also where people think that the Joker is going to fall. Uh, so that's why he's going to be having a new look of sorts. Uh, but this is interesting. I love this look for Deathstroke. I really hope they do uh, Joe some justice. Uh, so interesting news. In some DC television news, Stargirl Season 2 has casted its Jakeem Thunder and young actor Alcoya Brunson. Uh, now, just recently, uh, Jim Gaffigan was uh, casted as uh, Thunderbolt. Uh, and I was wondering if he was going to play uh, Johnny Thunder or not, but it seems they're going the Jakeem Thunder route. Exciting news. I've never seen this young actor before, uh, but I, I think I'm going to, I think we actually have to catch up on Stargirl. Moving along, we have some news coming out of HBO Max. The Green Lantern series will be rated TVMA for mature audiences. Now, not only will it be for adults, uh, but also the Dominators will be the villains of this series. Uh, and if you don't know who the Dominators are, basically it's one of the first races in the universe. And uh, they were going around and terrorizing planets, you know, conquering them, just being a real bully. So the Guardians created the Green Lantern Corps in response to their, you know, their, their, their villainous ways, so their destruction. Uh, so this is really cool. Uh, characters I didn't know existed, um, and now I do. I did a little bit of research, just enough. This is kind of research news. I didn't research everything, just just enough to get the uh, basics, but uh, very exciting. Now into some news coming out of the Miss Marvel television series. Uh, this uh, show has just started production somewhat recently, and these new set photos show off Kamala Khan in a uh, Captain Marvel-inspired uh, costume from Endgame. Now, there were some other photos earlier in the week that um, that were shown off, but they weren't really much. It was just Kamala on a bicycle riding around the city. Uh, but these costumes look really cool. Obviously, these are not going to be her actual official costumes, uh, but obviously she is taking a lot of inspiration from Carol Danvers, so that's really cool. And in some shocking news, CW has decided to cancel its Black Lightning television show, 
during its fourth season, which will now be its fourth and final season. I was not expecting this. Um, this show I actually did enjoy, though, like the most, uh, the majority of the CW shows. I have not continued on them, uh, but this one seemed like it was a fan favorite, and I'm super shocked that they decided to cancel it. Uh, but I know they're also developing a, a spin off show uh, for Black Lightning, so would you rather have Black Lightning or just one of these odd characters, you know, spin off characters? Black Lightning, right? Now in some spooky monster alien news, uh, Predator 5 has landed a new director in Dan Trachtenberg. Now Trachtenberg is uh, most well known for directing 10 Cloverfield Lane, of course the only Cloverfield movie I have not seen. Um, but I haven't even seen The Predator, which was the last movie they put out. I've only seen the first Predator. Uh, but again, interesting enough, uh, and I heard 10 Cloverfield Lane, obviously, is like the fucking best. Uh, so, could be fucking good. Now, in some more bittersweet news, um, Marvel has announced that production and filming for Black Panther 2 will begin in July of 2021. Now, it is expected that Letitia Wright will take on a more predominant role in this movie um, and that she will more than likely take on the mantle of the Black Panther. Now, the reason this is bittersweet, and uh, I've been reading around for a lot of fans, is um, Chadwick Boseman just passed away. And um, uh, people think that it's, it's just too soon to um, move on. And I agree, but I also disagree. The reason I agree is, yes, I myself am still mourning just as all the other fans are. Um, and of course, this is, you know, not going to be a win-win scenario. Like, no one's going to be 100% satisfied no matter what they do. But the reason I'm also for it is people need to work. Um, that's what this business is all about, you know, even, even with the unfortunate death of Chadwick Boseman, everyone in the production still needs jobs, and that's why I'm like, okay, I, I get it, I understand it, you know, people need to pay the bills, not necessarily Marvel, not necessarily Disney, but the PAs, the, the sound guys, the... The, the, the editors, the, the people that do the CGI, um, just fucking everybody. People need to get paid. People need to work. So, bittersweet, yes. I don't know. As we get more information, I'll make a more concrete opinion. But as of right now, I'm just, I'm, this is where I'm at, right here. For all you fellow Fire Stick users, HBO and Amazon has finally came to a deal and HBO Max will be coming to your Fire Stick. Now, people have been asking since HBO has been launched, why is there no HBO Max app on my Fire Stick? Why, 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 why? Finally, you'll be getting it. And I believe this year too, like it's coming within the month, which is uh, pretty cool. I was gonna say exciting again. I've been saying exciting way too much. Now in some more MCU news, the She-Hulk and Moon Knight television series will start production in March of 2021. I am most excited to see She-Hulk, to she she she, she sell She-Hulks by the seashore. Um, I am most excited to see She-Hulk on the big screen. She-Hulk is one of my comic book crushes, I know, um, but also Moon Knight is going to be a blast. So uh, both starting production in March, I'm, I'm just going to say it, exciting. And in some MCU news, it looks like Deadpool is a go over at Disney. Uh, recently, the film added two new writers uh, from the Bob's Burgers TV show. And uh, it will also be keeping its R rating, which is fantastic. Um, I know that the MCU is starting to think about dabbling in the R rated movies with movies like Blade coming up. Uh, so this is super exciting to me. I love the Deadpool character and I especially love Ryan Reynolds. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of jokes and re referential jokes he can make about this whole Fox Disney acquisition. 
and uh, the MCU as a whole. Uh, so, awesome news. It's showtime. Bueller. You lose! Good day, sir! So I am planning on doing a more fleshed out video for this series. Um, I want to do like a, you know, my favorite to least favorite, uh, breaking it down a little bit more cohesively. So I'm going to do kind of a rapid fire. Amazing introduction to the character and to the series as a whole. I love the black and white opening. The chase sequence is fantastic. The fucking holy shit. The title sequence is mesmerizing. My favorite Bond girl, um, I think my, my second favorite villain, I believe, Mads Mikkelsen was fantastic. It had my, the most like scene for me, uh, which is when uh, James Bond is poisoned and he is going into cardiac arrest and he has to try to get the actual thing on him. Uh, before he passes out and dies that movie that that scene was fucking incredible It's just the setting of the Casino Royale um, like, It just Fucking incredible eh. Ah, and then we moved on to Skyfall, which was a return to form. Love the introduction of all the new characters. The villain was fantastic. Javier, Javier Bardem was amazing. Loved his character. Uh, the whole story with, you know, the whole uh, backstory with the Skyfall Manor and uh, James Bond's family and where he grew up and that whole end battle, or not battle, I guess it was a battle, the whole end confrontation um, the death of M, it just, it was something special, and it was the first time where, like, Bond is a broken man, he has been broken down over these last two movies, and now he is old, he is beat up, he should not be on the job, he is finally, like, reaching his, his, he's, he can touch his mortality, and I loved that. And then Spectre apparently wasn't a lot of people's favorites, and I can see why. It kind of abandoned um, a lot of the development of the character over these three movies. Um, but I loved the cast. I loved the new MI6. I, I really enjoyed the idea that they are no longer relevant, and the, the double O program just isn't needed. It's way better if we can just, like watch people through their cell phones. I mean, there's there's no need for agents in the field when your cell phone is the only agent that, you know, uh, the, the, the government needs. And it was just, I enjoyed that. Um, but again, I understand that it, it does lose a lot of the development that we got over the last couple movies, and it just feels like, oh, James Bond's James Bond again. Like, you know, there's no, there's no skeletons in his closet. Uh, skeleton. Also, why the fuck is Day of the Dead like the big branding around this movie? It happens for like the first five minutes. Like it should have been the, you know, it should have been the setting for the entire movie, but it wasn't. And that was disappointing because I was actually looking, really looking forward to this because I have seen the trailers and I was like, that looks fucking beautiful. But it wasn't. Just overall decent. I enjoyed it. But it has the most disappointing use of villains in this movie. You have Christoph Waltz. You use Christoph Waltz. And they didn't. Disappointing. And then you also have Dave Batista, who is one of my favorite people to watch right now. And you just have him throw a couple punches. He has one really great sequence. Two, actually. He has a great ch chase sequence and then a great uh, fight sequence. And then he's gone. Like, I fully expected him to come back. And then he doesn't. And I'm like, wait, he actually died? Like, he died or what? What? So... That's disappointing, but the whole a culmination of all three of these movies, knowing that it's like one big organization coming together into Spectre was interesting, um, but I understand the complaints, but I, I actually did enjoy it. The best introduction, though, was the introduction of a Q in the museum. That scene was fantastic. So British. <laughs> The 
This is your forewarning. Spoilers ahead for The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 4, Chapter 12, The Siege. If you have not watched it already, go watch it, come back, and let's talk about it. So this episode brought back popular characters from the first season. Both I love Cara Dune and Carl Weathers' character, who also, Carl Weathers directed this episode, and he did a fantastic job. Um, the one thing I want to talk about in particular was the uh, storm trooper biker guys coming down that Rocky Mountain. That looked incredible, like super well done. But that, this whole episode was super well done. Like I love seeing all the stormtroopers. I love seeing them run around the ship, um, and, or the like the base rather, and uh, fighting all the stormtroopers who still can't fucking shoot. Um, it just, I don't know. This episode I wouldn't say was incredible, but it was entertaining. Like I was entertained. I enjoyed it. I was never bored. I was never antsy. I just enjoyed every minute of it, and I loved seeing Baby Yoda still having the munchies and stealing those kid that kid's, uh, they looked like uh, macarons or macaroons, like that's what they looked like to me, I fucking loved that. And did you also notice that uh, the, at the very end of the episode, the Mandalorian is, you know, he, he, he tries to go back to get the child because he's worried that... Um, he is going to be kidnapped and used for more experiments. And um, he comes in with the Razor Crest and starts, you know, annihilating all the biker guys and, and all that type of kind of shit. And uh, they fly up in the air and they're flying back down. They, they finally take out the last of the um, X Wings. Not the X Wings, the, uh, the fuck, what they called? Oh! I don't remember what they're called right now, but. Um, and the Baby Yoda vomits. That's straight out of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. <laughs> but overall, I really did enjoy the episode. It was entertaining, like I said. But next week's episode is 45 minutes long, and it's titled The Jedi. Which I think only means we are finally going to be introduced to a live-action Ahsoka. Super excited. And here we are at the end of the video. I want to give an apology. Uh, this end of the video, uh, the whole last week I watched and the Mandalorian stuff, I've, I'm feeling under the weather and I'm like super sweaty and sore and just not feeling great. So I, I don't, it's not as good as I wanted it to be. It's not, I'm going to be honest with you. It's just not up to the quality I hoped it would be. Um, but I still want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Peace.